Okay, so how is the ribosome then increasing the activation entropy? Okay, well, so this uh, slide here attempts to illustrate what's going on. It's the idea that the ribosome is an entropy trap. In particular, the idea is that the ribosome traps the substrates in a low entropy conformation. Okay, so here is, so you can think of A as, say, the peptidyl tRNA, and B is the amino acyl tRNA. These are the two reactants in peptide bond formation, and this is the uncatalyzed reaction. In the uncatalyzed reaction, then, the two reactants are, you know, free to diffuse about and to tumble around, and so they have lots of uh, rotational and translational freedom. However, in the transition state, when a bond begins to form between the two reactants, now the two reactants are no longer independent of one another. And so there's less, there are fewer degrees of freedom, fewer, less ability to rotate or, or move about. Okay? So less rotational and translational freedom. In other words, less entropy. So uh, in the uncatalyzed reaction, then formation of the transition state is associated with a negative entropy change. Okay, but uh, let's imagine what happens when those two uh, tRNA species uh, are bound in the peptidyl transferase active site. Well, now they're bound very tightly in the active site. They're huge, uh, you know, macromolecules. They're bound very tightly in the active site by all sorts of different uh, macromolecular interactions, and so they're held very tightly in position they have very little freedom to move about. They can't move independently of one another. And so they have a very, and so they're trapped in a very low entropy state. Okay. And then imagine what happens as the transition state begins to form. Well, A and B move closer to one another as a bond begins to form between them. And this frees up a little space here in the active site. And so now they've gained some ability to move around. Okay. And so now, uh, we, formation of the transition state actually results in at least a modest increase in entropy. Okay. So uh, this idea of an entropy trap has its limits, right? Because note that uh, here, when we bind the reactants in the active site, that's associated with a big loss of entropy. If this uh, binding entropy is too negative, binding won't occur. Right? Binding would never occur, and therefore uh, that puts a limit on the extent of rate enhancement you can achieve through an entropy trap. Okay, so just to summarize then, <clears throat> the ribosome does not reduce the enthalpy of activation, suggesting that chemical catalysis is not occurring. The ribosome catalyzes peptide bond formation by increasing the entropy of activation, suggesting that the ribosome rigidly binds its substrates, trapping them in a low entropy state. Entropy trapping can only yield a modest rate acceleration. In the case of peptide bond formation, this seems to be good enough. Okay. So while our ancestors may have been catalytic RNA molecules, the more varied structural and chemical properties of proteins make them much more versatile cal catalysts, allowing them to come up with all sorts of ways to do chemical catalysis. And so proteins have taken over most of the catalytic functions in modern cells. <laughs>